Hey there, Cousin here, and welcome back to Always Doing. This year I am putting non-fiction last. Most years I put fiction as my last and final best of 2020 video, but the non-fiction this year was amazing. There's several reasons for this. Number one, I read a lot of nonfiction this year, and part of that is because number two, I was a judge for the BookTube Prize in the nonfiction division. And a couple of these books are directly from there, and I'm so thankful. That made narrowing down this list so hard because there were so many amazing books that I read as part of the prize. Just getting this down to five was incredibly difficult. Some of the books are on this list purely because of their content, but a couple of them, maybe three of them even, are on because of the content plus the experience that I had reading them. One of them is Working by Studs Terkel. This book originally came out in 1972 and Terkel is a radio man and an interviewer and this is an oral history of sorts about what it was like in America at the time through the lens of people talking about their jobs. And there's so many things that are fascinating. First of all, even though he's a white dude from Chicago, he talks to people from all over the country all different backgrounds, all different jobs, and there's some things that don't really exist anymore that I was really interested to see. Some people talking about how um, early computers really affected their work as stockbrokers, for example. There's one woman who is lesbian and she talks about how that affected her at work and in her profession she was able to get through it okay. People knew about it and it was fine, but just the perception people had of queer people in the 70s, it's very like looking through, looking back at history. It's fascinating. And the experience of this book is that I annotated it. Uh, I it was, and it was the first book I'd annotated in years and years and years. So I developed my own annotation system. I had like three colors. I did the thing. I also have post-its of parts that I liked. And I went through this big thick book in a month. I figured out how many pages a day I would have to read. And that experience was wonderful. I know I'll be going back to reread this. I know I want to read more of Turkle stuff. Next is my favorite book from the Book 2 Prize. It's No Visible Bruises, What We Don't Know About Domestic Violence Can Kill Us by Rachel Louise Snyder. This isn't an easy book to read because this isn't an easy subject to read about, but she looks at it from many different angles and perspectives, concentrating mostly on violence by men against women. That's the largest proportion, though definitely not all of domestic violence. And within that, men who end up killing their partners and their kids. In the beginning, she follows one case chronologically, follow, talking to family members on both sides and figuring out what happened in this particular case, showing us what domestic violence can look like, why it is so hard for women to leave these situations. But it's not only that, it's not only from the victim's point of view, she also talks with abusers. And then at the end, she talks with advocates and people who are working to help break the cycle, to help the women. And just, it's a lot, it is a lot. But I feel like Snyder, what she does is she'll come up to something hard and then she'll back away from it and attack it from another angle and then come up to it again, which helped me as a reader. I still, this would leave me verklempt on the train while I was reading it, but so incredibly valuable. This is something that we all need to know about because like the title says, it can kill us if you don't know what to look for and not know what everything is just incredible. Then we have When We Do Harm, A Doctor Confronts Medical Error by Danielle Offrey. I did a full video review of this that I will link both up here and down below, so I won't get into too much detail now, but Offrey is an internal medicine doctor in New York City. I love her books. She talks a lot about the human experience of doctoring, and here she's talking about medical error, and not just in the checklist manifesto way, which is like, if you have a procedure, how do you stop from making mistakes in the steps of the procedure? as you can tell the answer is to make a checklist. But she talks about error in other areas, especially things like diagnostic error. When somebody comes to you, a patient comes to you with a collection of symptoms, how do doctors figure out what they have and how do they get that wrong? And how do you correct that? Because it's in their thinking process. It's not, please follow this checklist. You can't do that with something as nebulous as gestalt over what's wrong with somebody. This is another book that has some hard to read parts because she goes in depth into a couple of cases of medical error that weren't under her watch were some other people. And it is, it's infuriating in parts. The law really needs to change in some states in the United States because there's some things that are just not good. But I learned a bunch, absolutely 
fascinating and it doesn't end on a completely down note. She has tips, things you can do as a patient to make sure that you do not end up the subject of a medical error and if, heaven forbid, something does happen, people you can contact, advocacy groups and the rest. But this book it was another one hard for me to get through, but absolutely incredible. Next I have Selected Poems by Langston Hughes and personally most of the time I call poetry nonfiction and for Langston Hughes I feel like that fits. He was a poet of the Harlem Renaissance. After his death many consider him to have been queer although he never spoke about it in life and I love Hughes. I have since high school. This is actually the copy of the book that I had in high school and there's a bunch of post-its and things. Some of them are from this read, some of them are from when I first read it years ago, and it holds the same power and it holds the same just... and the thing is because he's African-American, the issues black people are facing now aren't all that different from what they were facing in the 50s and and earlier and it's heartbreaking because of that some of these poems felt so recent and new and raw even though they were written over half a century ago and it makes me sad what that means for the way america hasn't evolved or fixed things in the past decades but um fell in love with it all over again and last is another book I loved because of the experience of reading it and that is the autobiography of Malcolm X as told to Alex Haley. This was a buddy read that I was able to put together with a bunch of amazing people and that's what made this book four stars for me was being able to get together every week with all this diverse group of amazing folks and discuss what was going on here and what worked, what didn't work, what the world was like at the time and my education in civil rights I, they didn't teach me very much in school beyond Martin Luther King. We never touched Malcolm X and we had some great discussions about how maybe that was in a weird way a service because his legacy hasn't been watered down. It hasn't been homogenized or made mainstream the way that Dr. King's has been and that means that the, his thoughts and his speeches and everything, his image has the same power that it did while he was alive. I now know more about his life, which I really needed. I'm also interested in reading more about him, more about the civil rights movement beyond Dr. King. And there's just so many more, there's so many more holes in my knowledge that I need to fill. And again, I wanna thank everybody who buddy read this with me. You guys are amazing. And maybe we can read something in 2021. So there we have my favorite nonfiction of the year. There are so many books that nearly made this list, but not quite. Actually, a bunch of them were book two prize books. So if you want to go back and watch some of my vlogs, you'll see some of them there. But so and not easy topics. There's not very much light stuff here, but also worthwhile and impactful and important reads for me. If you've read these books, if you would like to read these books, if you'd like to talk about anything at all, that would be wonderful. What's, what was your best nonfiction read of the year? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.